Recently, I've been playing the free RTS game Zero K with some friends again. You might have seen it on my channel before, but if you haven't, I'd highly recommend Zero K to RTS fans. Not only is it free, the massive variety of units makes for a completely wild game. Just don't mind the visuals. That said, the systems of this game are quite complex. Now, I don't find myself to be great at this game, but in my circle of friends, usually, I find myself in the advantage. That's why I'm making this video, both as a means to teach people how to control some of the more complex sides of Zero K and to help my friends get better. I've realized that beginners only get better with trial and error, learning what units to use, what to build, etc. So in order to steer people in the right direction, I'm going to shorten that process of trial and error by telling them what not to do. A lot of these will apply to most other RTS games, but they are definitely essential to Zero K's gameplay. To start off, let's talk about the initial build order. In most RTS games, it's viable to build whatever economy buildings around you before you place down a unit factory. In Zero K, placing down econ before a factory makes no sense, since in Zero K, the first factory is free. Placing the unit factory as early as possible means you can create units as fast as possible, which only help with expansion. So, whatever you do, don't build anything else before you decide on a factory. No, I said build a unit factory, but don't build a strider hub. These units are special mid or end game units and are massive resource dumps. Zero K allows players to build anything at any point as long as the specific factory is made. However, building resource dumps finds the player without any economy and allows enemies to grow their own economy. So even if you end up getting a powerful unit, you'll probably find yourself losing as soon as you move it elsewhere. So don't just waste your resources. Build cheaper units to defend your constructors instead. Speaking of defending your constructors, don't build only constructors. Building things fast with an army of constructors seems enticing, but having nothing mobile to defend your economy is a bad idea. Early game, you should build about one or two, and then you should set your factories to build actual combat units after. That way, you can more safely expand your economy. If you do decide to build multiple constructors in the later game, either spread them out to build metal extractors, or only clump them up if you expect them to be killed. In general, you shouldn't be clumping your units at all. Oh yeah, I, I, I dare you, I dare you to come in here. <laughs> Having every single unit in a single ball begs to be hit by artillery. Spread out your units or try flanking. It's simple strategy. The same goes for your economy as well. Energy producers are volatile. They are necessary for building anything. They help the production of metal through overdrive, but they also tend to explode. The more expensive, the bigger the explosion. Even solar collectors blow up to damage their surroundings a bit. When you're building energy, try to spread producers out to the best degree. The easiest way of doing this is to hold Alt and Shift to queue a grid pattern, and then you use Z and X to fix the spacing between each building. The same goes for storage units. Typically spamming clumps of storage units is useless until endgame, and if they are found, you're left without any economy. So, keep your economy distance, and don't build everything close together. Somewhat related, do not focus building a single type of unit. I might go in depth in a future video, but Zero K essentially has a rock-paper-scissors combat system. To put it lightly, there are types of units in-game that specifically counter other types of units. For example, my friend Joe here typically builds glaives at the beginning of the game. Glaives are a cloakbot unit that are dirt cheap, weak, Yes, but cheap and fast. They are perfect for swarming or harassing enemy metal extractors. However, there are stronger units that specifically deal with swarm enemies known as riot bots. If Joe is only building glaives or any swarm unit, anyone countering with riot units will easily take care of his forces. So, don't just focus on one unit. Use the variety of units in Zero K to your advantage. The next one is going to suck for people who turtle. This applies to most other RTS games, but even more so in Zero K. Don't rely on defense buildings. The biggest problem with defenses is that they cannot move, and the resources spent on building them could be better used for your military, which can move. Not only that, certain military units just outrange any defensive building, and cloakbots can even just walk by your turrets. That said, having defenses is nice for defending metal extractors out of reach of your firepower. Simply put, Use them sparingly, not massively. Oh, and don't turtle. Not only will you struggle with economy, you are asking to be attacked by everyone else. The last do not is very important. 
It is a universal golden rule when it comes to these types of strategy games. Never leave your constructors and factories idle. Doing so means you are wasting precious time and technically precious metal. In 0k, if you find yourself with excess metal storage, that is a bad thing. Build quite literally anything advantageous to you or else you'll be a sitting duck. Typically, the perfect economy in 0k is only a self-sustaining amount of metal with excess energy. Even having barely any metal is better than having a lot of metal. Only when you are losing energy should you cut back on construction and production, as having excess energy goes towards your metal overdrive. I hope you found these tips useful and this video helpful. In reality, the best way to get better at these types of strategy games is to always play more. I plan to make another video like this soon, so if you want to see more, I would suggest subscribing. With that out of the way, I'm going to spam the best unit in the game, dirt boxes.